What's going on guys, it's Simo. So today I'm bringing to you a meta analysis for the September 2019 format. And oh man, do we have a lot to talk about because now with the Megaton promos in full circulation and the first series of tournaments coming to a conclusion, we can now see the impact that these cards have had on the format and see if we're gonna be going to a more combo heavy format, control heavy format, and what we can expect moving forward because with tournaments like YCS Niagara, YCS Ghent, YCS Fort Worth, and even Pro Play Tour Columbus not too far off, you guys need to know what to expect expect. Even if you're going to a regional trying to get your invite for nationals in 2020, there is a lot to talk about. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into it. I want to kick things off with the top 16 of Pro Play Tour Orlando. First of all, big shout outs to all of you guys. I had an awesome time being able to commentate, meet each and every one of you guys, sign some cards, and we had an absolute blast. It was a great event, and I hope to do it again soon for Columbus. So here's your top 16 breakdown. And honestly, this isn't really too surprising. This is something that we've come to expect. And so at least what we see are the most represented decks here. First and foremost being Orcus. Now that Orcus representation is encompassing multiple things. There are multiple different variants of Orcus here. We have uh, just more like pure, you know, standard traditional Orcus, but we also have Luna Light Orcus taking up two of the top 16 slots as well. This is something we've started to see more and more popular just because of the fact that the Luna Light cards are just really broken. The fact that none of these cards are hard once per turns means you can thoroughly abuse them and just go ahead, easily OTK your opponent with all the combos, including the Orcus combo. It's just a really, really nice way to diversify the metagame, at least from an Orcus standpoint. I think one of the big things that we've noticed, at least when it comes to Orcus, is that a lot of people thought Orcus was dead with Rusty Bardish getting banned on the last ban list. But as you can see, Orcus is going strong and has the highest representation, not only at this event, but also in terms of overall fields at a lot of major tournaments. So Orcus is definitely a deck to beat and something you need to look out for. And I think one of the big takeaways, especially from Play, Play Tour Orlando, was the fact that we saw these Orcus decks or any type of deck encompassing an Orcus engine as like their secondary plan. We would see all these combo decks have like a plan A in terms of like trying to execute some sort of combo. And then if they got hand trapped or stopped, you would just go into your Orcus combo as plan B or even plan C in some instances. And you'd still at least have that to end on if all else fails. And that way you just expend all of your opponent's resources. They only have like four cards in their hand because they might've burned like one or two hand traps and the Orcus combo is enough to get them there. So that's definitely something to look out for and a lot of decks are trying to incorporate the Orcus combo in as many ways as they can. So let's start off with the first place deck list being of course Sky Striker. Sky Striker I still believe to be the best deck of the format and it really goes to show when it's still taking first place left and right. Here's the list that did get first place piloted by Nicholas Ortiz and the thing is even when it comes to Sky Striker winning this event it's been winning other events as well. It's been winning regionals. It's won pretty much a majority of the major events of the last several formats including this format and I really don't don't think that's going to change. So even though Sky Striker's representation was a little bit lower compared to something like Orcus, at least in this top cut, Sky Striker is still one of the most terrifying decks because it just has tons of consistency. It can deal with so many different boards, even with just crazy combo decks that are still existing, even with Nibiru and Dark Ruler no more in the format. Sky Striker, in my opinion, is still the most dangerous because it has the best track record out of all the top decks. So not only do you have to look out for Orcus, but Sky Striker is up there as well. I think what's so cool about this top 16 breakdown though is that there's what like 10 different decks here like it's crazy to see the amount of diversity I mean you've got Orcus you've got Sky Striker you've got Salomon Great you've got so many different strategies here and I think it's really cool to see that we're in such a diverse format and there's so many different ways that you can take it and any one of these decks has a very realistic top at actually winning any one of these events let's go ahead and look at the second place list piloted by Jeremy Mitchell it's an Endymion Pendulum list now the Pendulum players have been adapting more to the Endymion in style simply because of the fact that when you have cards like Servant being able to fetch out your Jackal King before you summon five monsters, you now have a way to stop yourself from getting Nibiru, which is one of the bane of combo players existence. But then you also have the ability to search stuff like Zephyr Divine Strike. If you play the Zephyr engine to stop yourself from getting blown out by Dark Ruler no more, even if they play Dark Ruler no more, you still have Hieratic Spheres, which can still trigger in the graveyard and summon up something like Aether to at least give you one form of disruption to stop your opponent's push if they do drop that card on you. So this is the list that I think a lot of people are going to be leaning towards, not necessarily this list in particular, but incorporating cards like Servant, like Master of Endymion, different things like that. And whether or not you wish to play the Pendulum Magicians is up to you. There's also a top 16 list piloted by Ezekiel Carranza, who also got top eight at YCS Portland, and he was playing more of a pure Endymion list, not incorporating any of the Pendulum Magicians. So I'll have both of those lists for you here to check out. Then for the top four, we had the Lunalite Orcus list. I was already talking about this a little bit before, and just wanted 
to showcase that list here for you guys so you have any point of reference. I'll have most of these deck profiles up on my channel, so be sure to stick around or subscribe if you haven't already, just to make sure you don't miss any of those. And the other top four was Salamangrate. And Salamangrate, again, still one of the best decks of the format in my opinion. It may not do anything unfair, but it's kind of like the best well-rounded deck of the format. It can kind of compete against all the decks. It doesn't have really a bad matchup necessarily against any deck, but it doesn't particularly excel in any different direction. It can incorporate a ton of hand traps to slow the other decks down, and it's super consistent. The fact that this deck is able to pump out and do what it does every single game round after round consistently makes it a very solid contender, especially for an 8, 9, 10, 11 round tournament if you're planning on going the distance. So Salamangrate, even though it's neutered with one gazelle and one spinny, is still a formidable threat in this format. Now another deck I wanted to discuss is Cyber Dragon Orcus. Now this is kind of another take on Orcus, but it's playing a very heavy core of Cyber Dragons, no pun intended, and this is a very interesting take on the deck. And the reason I want to bring this up is not only did it get top eight at Pro Play Tour Orlando, which I'll have the list for you guys here to look at, but it's also been being piloted by some of the other pro players in different regions. Blair Hunter has been winning, like I think he's won three regionals or something back to back to back, maybe not one, but top three regionals, excuse me, playing a list similar to this. They've got stuff like Adeception and Calvin Chow uh, getting first and second at a regional in California, I believe, playing another list similar to this. So this is a emerging strategy that you guys might have to keep an eye on because this deck can be very effective going first or second. If you're going first, you can establish your Orcus combo backed by a Cyber Dragon Infinity, which is very deadly. Not to mention Infinity can help play around Nibiru so you don't get blown out. But if you're going second, you can just OTK your opponent because you're playing Cyber Dragons, one of the most effective tactics for going second. So this is a dangerous deck to look out for and I would not underestimate, especially if it's being piloted by some of the game's better players. Now, another deck I want to talk about is Guru Control. It did make top eight at the Pro Play Tour and it also got top cut at a few other regionals these past couple of weekends as well. Guru Control is one of those rogue decks, kind of similar to something like True Draco, which I'll also have a deck profile up here for you guys as well. It's a deck that, you know, it doesn't do anything crazy. It's more of a control slow stun style deck, but it is able to play a ton of floodgates. It's fair. It's fairly effective. And with the format kind of all over the place, it's able to thrive in a format that you can kind of control the game, do what it does best. And it, if it made top eight, hey, honestly, it can't be too bad. I also want to do talk about the star of the show when it came to Pro Play Tour Orlando, Mr. Top 16 himself, Jeff Leonard playing Mystic Mind Burn. Yes, Mystic Mind Burn in September 2019. Who needs Metaverse when you can play stuff like DD Guide, Demise of the Land, and all the other crazy cards that Jeff played? Kudos to you, man. I think it's so awesome that you managed to top this event. And the list is going to be here for you guys. I also have the profile on my channel. Definitely check it out. Such an amazing guy. And it was really cool to see this make it all the way into the top cut. Everyone was rooting for you. You were the people's champ. And it was sad to see you go in top 16. But congratulations. Congratulations for making it that far. Now, the last of the big decks from Pro Play Tour Orlando that I want to discuss is Thunder Dragon. And the reason for that is because pure Thunder Dragon has definitely solidified itself a spot in this format. But what's interesting is that it's actually taking advantage of the other Megaton promo, Dimension Shifter. And this is so cool because with Dimension Shifter, not only do you effectively turn off your opponent's turn, because if any of your deck relies on the graveyard whatsoever, being almost all of them, if you're looking at the top meta contenders, Sky Striker loses a ton of its recursion, so does Salomon Great and Orcus and all the different things like that, but this is the one deck that can get away with main decking Dimension Shifter because of combinations of cards like Battery Man Solar in addition to Dimension Shifter turning all copies of Solar into pretty much Gold Sarcophagus, and that's really cool for your setups, and we've seen Dimension Shifter on and off of all across the weekend, and about 50% of the time it's an absolute blowout, and the other 50% of the time, if you don't have a follow-up, it may not be the strongest card, but I still think it's cool that players are experimenting with this, and regardless of whether or not you want to play Dimension Shifter, Pure Thunder Dragon is still another deck that's going to be out there that you need to be cognizant of because it's still very strong even in its pure form. Colossus is still a very big pain in the ass for a lot of decks to deal with, and Titan, a lot of people forget, is ridiculous. So definitely keep that in mind moving forward as well. And now I want to touch on some other decks that managed to do fairly well over the past weekend or two. One of them was actually a Go Second Infernoid list that managed to get second place at, I believe, a Detroit Regional. I think that's 
pretty incredible. Infernoid is one of those sleeper decks that you see every once in a while, but never manages to do anything too crazy. But I guess it's something that at the rogue or even sleeper level, you should, you know, be mildly aware of because if one person starts playing it, maybe other people will get the idea. So it could just be a one off, but I thought it was still pretty cool to see. There's also a Orcist Dragon Link deck that I think got fourth place at another regional. Dragon Link, another one of those decks that people had high hopes for, but didn't really do a whole lot. It's still cool to see that there is another take on the deck in the TCG that is seeing some sort of success, even though it is incorporating the Orcus cards, but hey, a majority of the combo decks are nowadays because it's nice to have that plan B when your plan A does get stopped by a hand trap. One other deck I wanted to discuss is Altergeist, because although Altergeist didn't do a whole lot at Pro Play Tour Orlando, I do want to mention that Altergeist not only won one, but two regionals this past weekend, and that's pretty significant because Altergeist, again, we've seen it being piloted by DZ doing well at both the UDS as well as YCS Portland. It's still one of those decks that you need to be mindful of because it's still in the format and it's very powerful. And if you're not prepared for that specific matchup, it could just completely and utterly dominate you because it is one of those decks that is very tricky to play against. A couple other decks I do want to mention, there was, I believe, a uh, Dark Warrior Orcus. This was piloted, I think, by Benjamin, who also did very well at the UDS in Indianapolis. I think he got second place. He's still piloting this deck, and this is a deck that I've seen a, a few other people people try out for themselves as well. So again, another Orcus variant, but again, a cool take on it. Just having your A, B, and C plans, ultimately ending on just crazy boards, regardless of what happens. There's also a True King Dinosaur list that did fairly well. I think it got like fifth place or something like that at a regional. So that was pretty cool to see. And then last but not least, I got to give some love to Asian Persuasion because this man got like ninth place or something with spell books in 2019. Like what kind of world are we living in where spellbooks are able to garner that high of a placing at this current point in the metagame? I mean, kudos to you, man. I mean, that is just so incredible to see. You are like the ultimate rogue king, but I think the ultimate thing here that I want you guys to take away from this video is that, yes, there are still going to be your top decks. You need to be mindful of decks like Orcus and Sky Striker and Salomon Great and Pure Thunder and Pendulum. Those are probably the decks you need to look out for the most, but ultimately, there is so much room for innovation and creativity in this format. The format is still wide open with possibilities and you can see that people are experimenting and nothing is set in stone. There's still two weeks before YCS Ghent and YCS Niagara come around so there could be plenty of time for more innovation to be had and I think Yu-Gi-Oh is in a pretty good place right now and it's cool to see that even with Nibiru and Dark Ruler no more existing in the format, combo decks are still thriving. A lot of us thought that it was going to be the end-all be-all but realistically the players have adapted, that's not too surprising, and we are still seeing these combo players learn learning to work around these cards and still see an extreme amount of success. So guys, those are just my thoughts. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think about this meta analysis and what other decks you hope to see come emerge in this format. I'd really love to hear your thoughts. Thank you so much for watching the video. Be sure to like the video as always. Subscribe to the channel for more amazing Yu-Gi-Oh! content. And if you found this video helpful, consider supporting me on Patreon or becoming a YouTube channel member. Because just by showing your support in any way that you can, you're investing in my ability to continue bringing you amazing Yu-Gi-Oh! content. So thanks so much again, and we'll see you next time.